Hi everybody, this is Miss Kay. I'm going to give you a little tutorial on how to make an atmospheric perspective landscape. So you can see here I have my um, digital drawing in Canvas and you can see I have my tints and shades um, showing foreground, middle ground, and background. So we're gonna take a look at how to create a landscape using tints and shades in Canvas. So I'm gonna go ahead back to my homepage in Canvas where you can see now I have a few different drawings that I've done. So over the past couple days, um, we've been practicing making tints, which is your pure color plus white, and then shades your pure color plus black. And so you can see there, I was trying to see if I could get a good value scale We'll go back to my other one. So um, over the last couple of days, you were to practice and see, you know, which colors you really liked in Canvas and see if you could get a nice value scale. So we learned that when you were in Canvas, there's multiple tools over here to the left. And to make our value scales, I was just sticking with the marker tool. If you wanted to change your color, you click that circle button on the very, very top right now, it's highlighted black. And when you click on it, it will show two items. The first one is palette, where you can choose um, a certain set of colors from there, or we've been looking at custom. So this is where you could really choose a full spectrum of colors um, to work with. So if I was working on this blue down here, um, I would probably continue my value scale there um, to see if I could make it all the way. It looks like that might have been like where I started and I want to try and end up over there. So that to me looks like a almost a match to the one I actually had. So I might say I want to go a little bit lighter if my goal is to try and get to white. So this would be my next one on my value scale here. And I might go a little bit lighter there. Might even say that might be a little bit too light, barely can see it. We might need one more before we get to the actual white. Okay, so that's what we've been practicing. So now we're gonna take these skills and hopefully by now you have found some kind of color scheme that you really like um, so that you can turn it into a landscape. So your first move before we get to something um, detailed like the tree and mountain landscape you see is we're gonna make a, just a quick sketch. So this is just an example of a quick sketch that I did um, where again, I'm just outlining where I want my mountains, where I want my trees so I, that I have foreground, middle ground and background. So if you haven't made a sketch, I'll go ahead and show you real quickly. You're going to click the blue button that says new drawing and it will open up a blank canvas. It looks like this. Okay. And then again, you have your tools over on the left hand side. So you have a pencil tool and I'll just go ahead and quickly show you again what those tools look like. So here's our pencil, our pen, marker, and chalk. Okay. You also have an eraser and you have forward and back or backwards arrows that can get rid of big steps. But the eraser is nice if you're just trying to get something small. Um, for my sketch, I'm just gonna go ahead and stick with the pen tool. And when you come up on the tool menu bar, underneath the um, circle button, okay, where you choose your color, underneath of that, there's a little pencil with a black triangle. When you click on that, that's where you can choose the size of your tool. So if I'm using the pen tool, if I have a 10, that's gonna give me a very fine line. If I increase it, the line is going to get thicker. So I just wanted to show you that's where you can change your size. But um, for now, it's just my sketch, so I'm not really concerned um, with the width of my line. I'm just concerned with getting my outlines done. So let's go ahead and look at making a quick sketch. So if I know I wanna make a landscape, and since I showed you a mountainous landscape from the beginning, I'm just gonna stick with that um, to start with. So I'm just gonna put some wavy lines. I might say that I want some more in the background. Again, it, this is your sketch. You can always go back and change it. I'm just trying to figure out 
where I want certain things. Okay, so if I have that, and then I might say, hmm, I want one more, okay. And now I'm gonna say, all right, I want some trees right here. Cause again, I'm just trying to figure out where I want stuff. So when you're making your sketch, don't be so concerned about having a really great drawing. The idea is just to plan out where you want stuff. So I'm just gonna say, woohoo, I'm gonna put some trees. Bob Ross would say, happy little trees. And so on and so forth. So you can see I'm really just using those tools and scribbling it out to plan out where I want something, okay? So this is highly recommended for you to do if you're considering using Canvas, make a sketch first um, so you can get used to the tools because you might decide that you hate the pen tool and it's not for you. You might decide that the pencil tool is more your style. So this would be um, helpful for you to figure that out. And now you see, okay, I have you know my trees here in my foreground. I would probably put something else here, like maybe I have some grass, maybe, yeah, let's do that for the one we're gonna look at. Let's let's put some grass in here. Uh, we'll make it a little bit different than the one I already did. So I'll still have trees, I'll still have mountains in the background, so it's similar to the one I showed you at the beginning, but I'll change it up just slightly, okay? That's what's great about a sketch. You can change it and really plan out what you, what you want, okay? So I have my foreground here, a nice middle ground with some hills and mountains off in the background. So now let's look at how to turn this into um, a detailed value landscape. So I'm going to go back and hit the home button. That's this button up here in the corner. Okay. And when I click it, that's going to take me to the home page in Canvas where now I see my tints and shades. I see all the other drawings I've done in Canvas. So. Our goal is to get something detailed like the green landscape, but using this new sketch. So I'm going to click new drawing, the blue button. All right. And it's going to open it up. Sometimes if you see right here, like my whole screen is just white. So what we want to see is our whole canvas right now. It's zoomed in a little bit. So I'm going to zoom out so that I see where my actual page ends. Um, so if your screen looks like that, you just might want to zoom out. I like seeing the edge of my paper. All right. So let's go ahead and um, get our outlines done. So what's really great about canvas is you have the ability to add layers. Okay. So that's this button right here where it's the square with the line underneath of it. And when you're looking here, you see right here, it says layers and you see the giant arrow that I just drew. So this gives you the ability to add an arrow by clicking the plus button or also hide a layer that you don't want to see. You can see that the arrow I had drawn kind of disappeared when I um, clicked on the eyeball. This also gives you the ability to add a background color. I'm not going to worry about that quite yet. I'm just going to focus on getting some details in there. So let's go ahead and take a peek at this. So right now I'm just going to um, think about my first layer. So I'm going to um, delete the one I made and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to get my outlines of my landscape. So again, I'm thinking back to my sketch. If you have to go back to your sketch to see, that's absolutely fine. And I'm not too worried about what my outlines are going to look like at the moment just wanting to get them in there. I am going to decrease my pen size just a little bit. And again, I'm not worried about my color either. Right now, I'm just going to try and focus on um, getting my lines. And again, you might need to go back to your sketch to reference to see what you wanted. Um, it's okay if your lines don't exactly match up, just as long as you have, you know, pretty much um, your similar idea down. So since I'm drawing, since I drew mountains to begin with, I'm going to stick with that. If I decided I wanted to switch to a seascape, I would probably want to make another ski, uh, seascape. So here you see me, I'm just kind of adding my mountains. If you mess up a little bit, it's absolutely okay. Like I'm, again, it will make sense as to why I'm ignoring that for right now. I'm not too concerned with it. I'm just putting in like where my basic stuff is these lines are actually going to disappear soon. And then on my sketch, I had added um, 
like a grassy area with trees in the front. So I'm gonna go ahead and just add my straight line there. That's gonna be where my trees come in and where my grass is, okay? If I needed to remind myself, I could um, draw that. But again, um, you'll see in a moment that's not necessary. Because what I'm gonna do now, now that I have these lines, I have my foreground right here in the front. I have my middle ground. in the middle and I have my background okay so I've got all those three things um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those for you and let's look now at making a new layer so that we can get our color in so now I'm gonna go up here where our layer button is I'm going to click the plus button to get a new layer that doesn't get rid of my lines. It just adds something new on top. Okay. And this is where I now really need to think about which color scheme I'm picking for my artwork. So since I did a green, I'm going to pick a different color. And again, you should have already picked your color scheme. So I had a few um, in canvas, um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick a different one since I already did the green. So maybe I'll do, um, this nice like magenta color set. I think this will look really nice. So this is where, um, this is what I'm gonna stick with for now. All right, now the first thing I would wanna think about is where my darker tones are gonna go. And remember we said that those shades, those stay in the front. So shades that are darker tones like this, I'll switch to my marker real quick. That's what you're gonna wanna do your foreground with. Your tints wherever you choose that to be that's going to be about there and even lighter tints are going to be further back okay so that's what we really need to think about before we um, start adding in your colors really plan out where you want them so on this first layer I'm going to go ahead and start adding my color to my um, mountains in the very back and since they're farthest back i'm going to choose like one of my lightest tints not that i'm not going to choose the absolute lightest because i'll probably go back and fill the sky in with a lighter color but i'm going to still pick a pretty light color about right here now here's why i said not to worry about if those lines looked good since we're in a layer these are going to disappear I'm now just going to take my marker tool and I'm just going to fill them in. And I kept the marker on a pretty decent um, size just so again I can fill them in pretty easily. If you have a, a smaller size it's going to take you a little bit of scribbling to get that filled in. But again I'm not worried about overlapping, it doesn't matter because I'm working in layers. If you're not working in layers, you might, um, which is totally fine, um, you might just get irritated with yourself every once in a while where you have to go back and like touch things up. But since I'm working in layers, I have my back two mountains filled in. I'm gonna move on to my next set of mountains. So I'm gonna click another layer. And I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change the color now. And I'm gonna gradually work my way down. That's the goal, right? To show the illusion of space through tints and shades. So I'm gonna pick a slightly darker version. Let's see, I'm kind of thinking right here. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. So now that I'm on my new layer, I'm gonna start by just outlining. kind of think in terms of like coloring. Like I'm someone that if I color, I tend to outline where I'm coloring and then I'll go back and like fill everything in. So I'm just gonna give it a nice outline. So I know where I'm going. And then I can just take my time and get it nicely colored in. Now you wanna be careful when you're coloring in. 
Um, if you go back over, you'll see that my opacity right now is set to 100. If your opacity is not, it might be set around like a 70 or an 80. And what that means is your color might be slightly transparent. So you can see there as I was coloring, and as I'm moving back and forth, it's getting darker and darker. That's because of the overlap that's happening. But if you wanna switch that so you don't have that problem, if you just set your opacity to 100, it will solve that and you'll get a nice filled in color without overlaps. Again, the opacity would be a great way to like get value um, within something if you wanted to see that overlap. But for sake of this, I'm just gonna stick with 100. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead, fill in this last little bit, and you would repeat this process for any of the layers that you have, right? So again, the whole first part of drawing your landscape is probably just going to be um, you filling in some tints and shades um, wherever you have those uh, layers. Okay. I'm not starting off with details. I'm not worried too much about if this mountain looks like it has trees on it. Right now, I'm just concerned with getting my layers in with whatever colors and tints and shades I'm choosing. And again, um, since I started light, I'm gradually working my way down. So uh, this is a really great option because you can really kind of pick and choose and um, see if it's the color, tint, or shade that you really like. And again, if you end up choosing something and you don't like it, you can always hit the back arrow and choose a different one. But that one seemed all right to me, so I'm gonna go ahead back to it. And I'm gonna double check, make sure I'm on the right layer. And again, I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with a basic outline. You might have to smooth out some of your stuff every once in a while. I get a little line. I just have to erase it. And then sometimes you'll notice the toolbar kind of pops up. That I would say is probably the one drawback to this program is that toolbar pops up every once in a while and can get in the way. But now that I have my outline, I'm just going back and filling in with color. Now this layer, since it's getting closer to us, I think I would definitely put some detail into this layer. On my green one, we'll go back to that in a moment and you'll see what I'm talking about where um, I added some detail to it. But I'm also, this is a larger space, so I'm gonna get a bigger area for my marker because I'm just kind of filling it in right now. And then we'll go back and look at how to add detail. All right, so now that this layer is here, let's go take a peek at the other drawing so I can show you um, what I mean by certain details. So let's open this landscape. So you can see here, I kind of have the same thing going on where I started off um, very light, moved forward as it got, or it got darker as I moved forward. <clears throat> So on the layer right before the foreground, so that's this one right here, right? Okay. On this layer, I started adding details, but you can clearly see that I definitely went in first and I drew a line. That's why I said it's great to get those outlines. And then what I did is I came back with the marker tool, or excuse me, the pen tool. I'm pretty sure I used the pen tool for this. And I did my detail work on top of there to give the illusion that we're starting to see those shapes. We're starting to see the trees. They're not super close to us, but they're also not extremely far away. So that's what we're going to take a look at now. And it really gives the illusion of like atmospheric perspective simply just through um, the tints and shades that I added, but also with the line work. So I probably wouldn't add these details to these unless it was super, super tiny and I you know, wanted to get 
certain details there. And I most definitely wouldn't add trees back here because that would then get rid of the illusion of atmospheric perspective. If I'm really thinking in terms of mountainous landscapes, this is happening because of you know the atmosphere, the mist or the fog that you'd see in that kind of landscape. All right, so let's go ahead and get rid of all of my purple markings. All right, and here's all of my layers that I use for this one. So you can really see how they built up on top of each other, okay? So I did the same kind of thing where I started off with simple outlines and started filling them in gradually and moved on and started getting basic shapes and then adding details, okay? So that's what we're gonna um, take a look at. So let's go back to the one we started together. All right, so now that I have this layer, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more to start adding um, details. I'm gonna check the size of my pen tool. That looks pretty good to start. So again, for this, it's um, gonna be pretty repetitive and this part's really up to you. I'm just gonna show you my trick for making um, the trees that I did on the green and what we um, looked at in class um, so that you can make these if you wanted. But you can make um, different types of trees or different types of silhouettes. It's completely up to you um, in what kind of landscape you're choosing. So for that, I'm just gonna put a line um, and my trick in class was just to simply focus on making little scribbly lines. So I'm gonna make my pencil a little bit um, smaller. And I just drew lines coming out of the middle line. And I'm bringing them all the way down and connecting to the mountain. Because again, the reality of this and the illusion is gonna be made if you make it look like they're connected, okay? We don't wanna see like, the bottom of your tree because this is giving the illusion that what you're actually seeing is like tree tops. So again, I'm just drawing like little lines and this part's going to be repetitive. You're going to want some trees in different um, heights and again, I'm just drawing like little tiny marks. I'll zoom out so you can see how sm so they're pretty small but remember to to really get a good grip on the size of your tool um, if you zoom in you're able to really get a, a lot of small detail work and it will really um, make all the difference in your drawing so again I'm just using basic lines I might even say I'm gonna use a smaller pen all lines. I might even do a little scribbling just to get some stuff filled in. Absolutely okay for you to leave like some white in your trees. It'll give the illusion that like some light shining through. That's your total choice as an artist. Um, my just big suggestion would be, especially since this is not the layer that is um, closest to us, that you want to have your ground covered. And what I mean by that is you want uh, trees to be filling in most of that space. If you were giving the illusion of, you know, a tree covered mountain, you might be doing a different landscape. So it might look a little different, but that's your basic trick. So again, you just saw me make a straight line and then make little lines coming outwards and pointed down. That's like the trick to getting like an easy um, tree. Do it one more time. I'll make a, a bigger one. Straight line, starting at the top, outwards and down. And then as I um, move downwards, they're getting longer. That's gonna give the illusion that you have um, a tree. And again, I might go ahead and just scribble those in, get some more. And I'm just going to continue doing this to this whole layer because I want all of this filled with the illusion that there's trees. 
maybe I might want, you know, like a rock or two. So maybe I'd say like, oh, that'd be kind of cool to have like some non-tree shapes. That's totally your call. But I'm gonna go ahead and take a moment to fill the rest of this layer in. So let's go ahead and look at just adding like some different texture instead of trees. So by now you've gotten the point of how to do the trees, but maybe I do in fact want to make it look like um, it's now like rocky. So I'm just going to come back to my pen tool and choose like a larger size. Again, you're welcome to switch to like another tool. Just know that um, if your opacity is set to 100, not all of them will um, be the same. So you're welcome to, you know, try and explore, but um, and see which works best for you. Um, the chalk might be pretty cool to come back to, but for now I'm just gonna go back to my pen and I'm just gonna get some like basic um, texture. So this is just gonna make my lines um, look not as like even or smooth. And that's what I want. I wanted to give the illusion that like this is rocky and then, you know, maybe I'll go ahead and like add like a tree or two, like right up here, just giving the illusion that there was like a rocky hill there. And I'm not going to add that much more detail to it um, because you might see in a bit that some of this might even end up being covered. So I'm just going to leave it where it is here. And then again, I'm just going to go back and add like a little bit of texture, making it look kind of rocky. Make sure I get the whole side because I was zoomed out. So I'm just going to put like some extra bumps in there. Make it look like it's kind of rocky. Okay. So now that I have that, I'm going to go back and I think do the same thing to this side, maybe like where the hills start. So just to give that illusion. And again, this is just me. Look, this is the overall like lines that I'm doing. I'm just, uh, you're not seeing the beginning of the line because I'm starting um, on my layer that's below it and it's the same color. So it's attaching it. So again, if your hand isn't as steady um, and you're worried about, you know, your lines um, zoomed out, you're really not going to see everything, but just those subtle little bits where um, you have little jagged areas makes a lot of difference in making it look a little bit realistic. So um, don't worry if your initial lines weren't smooth, it works out for you in the end.
All right, and I'm gonna zoom out so you can see. All right, so there's my, um, so far I have my background mountains and then I've got my nice middle ground. So your middle ground should have the start of some detail, okay? But remember, that's just the middle ground. Because it's the, using the same color, the same tint or shade or whichever one you chose, um, it's making it still look like it's off in the background, okay? So we still have this area um, down here we need to fill in, which is our foreground. So just remember, you should start having details on your middle ground. You don't need to with your background. Um, it, again, it, it's nice that it gives the illusion um, of it being far off in the distance. So now let's look at making a new layer. Okay, and this is where you can really tell like this is why it's nice to make these layers look I'm going to take this one away and you can see there's all of my details that I just drew. So now let's go ahead and fill in. So again, I'm using my marker tool and I'm just filling this whole area and so I can get a pretty decent size marker. Since this is the bottom, I'm not too worried about outlining like I normally do. I'm just going to get, get the color filled in. If I was painting, this is the same kind of like technique I'd, you know, um, use those larger brush strokes to go back and forth. And that's basically what I'm doing here. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in. Not too worried if I made like a little bump right there. It's totally okay. You can fill it in if you want, but it's not necessary because I need to add details to this layer. Okay. Just like I did with my middle ground and these layers are still going to be in the same color. All right. So let's go ahead and make our new layer and start to add some details. So I'm going to go back to my pen and this is really up to you. So, um, in my sketch or if, you know, we can always go back, let's reference it. Um, and so in the sketch that I made with you guys, I do have trees in the background, but I said that I had wanted some, um, grass and such in the foreground. So I need to make sure that I am doing that. So now that I'm back on my drawing, I'm going to go ahead and start. And again, I'm not concerned with making sure the trees are in the exact area of my sketch. That doesn't matter. It was just mapping it out. So now is where you as the artist get to make some choices of saying, where do you want your trees? Do you want something else? Do you want, you know, the outline of an animal? Do you, you know, you have all these choices um, and think silhouette. I'm not concerned with the details. I'm just concerned with the overall like shape. Okay. So I'm going to just stick with trees um, for now and remember that basic idea is to draw the line. I'm going to get a thicker one. Let's check the width of the marker. And since these are in the foreground, they're also going to be bigger. I'm not going to make little tiny trees um, the same as those. I need these to be bigger. So. I'm going to use the marker tool to really fill in some large space before I even worry about any detail pen work. And I'm just going to start off drawing how tall I want it. And then I'm actually just going to fill in like a giant triangle. I'll leave some white showing. But if you end up really liking something like I really love this area here, I'm leaving it. I do not want to cover that up with a tree. So I could draw like a smaller one. We can do that, but I'm going to leave this empty and then, um, I'll have this area stay open for now. Maybe we'll go back and put something else in there. But now that I have this, now I'm going to switch back to my pen tool and I'm going to go ahead and add some of those um, details like I added before. And again, it's pretty much going to be the same thing. I'm starting at the top and I'm making my little lines outwards coming down the edge of that triangle that I colored in. So what's really great about doing that, you know, colored triangle is you get the bulk of it, um, filled in, you get the shape, the overall shape, but then as you're adding your lines, I see these colors poking through, right? 
And that's what's really nice because, you know, if the sun was shining, like you are going to see some of those lighter colors showing through. But since I'm facing, since the tree is facing me and hitting the back of the tree, I'm not really going to see um, lighter tones directly here. I'll switch to a color so I can point to it. I'm not really going to see lighter tones there. Okay, so now that I've got my basic um, details of my tree, I did go ahead and say that I wanted to add some grass to this, um, and maybe I'll add um, some rocks or something else. But um, so I could, if I wanted to, switch to a different tool. Um, maybe if I'm doing grass, I want it to be a little bit more wispy. That's totally up to you. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and try that out. Um, let's see how it looks. We'll figure out. I'll try it out to this area over here. We'll see if I like it. So it's not too bad. I think maybe with some layering, it would look interesting. Like maybe like, um, you know, long grass that's maybe like blowing in the breeze. Um, so I might do a little bit of work there to make it really look like that. So yeah, I like how it's overlapping. So I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with this for some grass. Um, you're welcome to keep, you know, if you wanted to keep with the same exact tone, because the thing about the pencil is, um, its opacity is definitely different than the pen. So it's going to look like a different tint or tone. So, um, it doesn't exactly look like it's blending in with my uh, foreground right now, but I think it will add some interesting um, areas to it and I'll fix it up with some pen work in a second. So I'm going to go ahead and add these. I can play with, around with that like a little bit more. Um, still looks kind of interesting, um, but also it still kind of looks like the grass is like f a little bit further in the background. So maybe that's like right over like the hill where the gra the trees are kind of more sitting towards us. So if I wanted to fix that, I could. I'm gonna go ahead back to my pen tool, and I'm gonna zoom in. And I could add some detail grass um, using my pen, and that's really going to give the illusion of, okay, there's some grass in the background peeking up, and here's some grass right there in the foreground. So this is really like connecting it with that layer so that we don't just see like a line. So this is going to be my last little bit that I'm going to do. And again, I'm just going to zoom, I'm going to zoom in because you'll notice your tool, even though you think you've chosen like a small pen when you zoom in it gets thicker so you're able to really fill in a little bit more space and then when you zoom out it's actually small detail work so don't be afraid to zoom in um, it might look a little bit weird and then when you zoom out it's going to look really amazing so again I'm just going to do this to like because I don't want to see this stark line that doesn't really make sense for my drawings
All right, so there we go, zoomed out. Um, we've got my details up front. You can see um, there's definitely some atmospheric perspective happening here. Um, and most of that's due to the um, shade and tint work, right? So we broke our drawing down into layers. We'll just do a quick little review so you can kind of see um, how we started. And I'm just gonna get rid of them from the start so that we can see a really nice um, before and after. So there's our outline. We started gradually filling in just basic fills. We started adding a little bit of details in our middle ground. We started adding some details filled in in the foreground. And there we go. All right, I could go one step further if I wanted to. If I decided now I wanted to fill in my background, I definitely could. I would probably, since I'm using like a monochromatic um, color scheme, I'd probably wanna like try and find like a pale color that like fit and didn't like, I wouldn't wanna choose, you know, unless I want a night scene that actually looks kinda cool. So that's up to you, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with um, a pale tint for that so that it really blends in um, with my overall aesthetic. So that's your basic, um, that is your basic tutorial on how you can do a really cool landscape using tints and shades in canvas. Again, you're not limited to just doing mountains and trees. Um, really practice with getting, um, you know, what kind of tools you liked and choosing a color scheme that you like. So it's pretty much up to you, but those were the same techniques that I used in this green drawing. Um, and I think I even liked the red one that I did a little bit better. So um, again, practice, practice, and I look forward to seeing what landscape you make. All right. Have fun, guys.